Where you are today, get ready. We are going to the Word of God. The Word of God is living. The Word of God is alive, ever alive. And so, uh, in this month of July, our theme is divine speed. We believe God that no more slow motion in our lives. Things will pick up. Grace will pick up. Blessings will be released. You will move very quickly and very fast. Those of us who attended the convention, I want to say thank you for being faithful. If you missed part of the convention, you can always go back and there's a replay. You can always get some of the messages that were ministered during the convention. So today, this morning, I want to speak to you on this message, Grace for Divine Speed. You know, we are at the moment where we need all the grace we can have. Today, I want your eyes to be focused on the grace of God. So in my message today, I want to focus your eyes on the grace for the race. The God factor in all that we do. Without God, we can do nothing. So if you are looking for divine speed today, I want to put it in front of you. There is grace for divine speed. Turn with me in your Bible, if you will. I'm reading Psalm 18. I'm going to read from verse 32 to 34. Psalm number 18. We're talking today, this morning, on the subject, grace for divine speed. Psalm 18, verse 22. It says, It is God that guided me with strength. Oh, come on, look at that scripture. The psalmist said, It is God, not my ability. It is not my certificate. It is not my effort. He recognized his source. When you recognize your source and you honor him, it will supply more. This scripture says, it is God that guided me with strength and maketh my way perfect. In verse 33, it says, it maketh my feet like hinds feet and setteth me upon my high places. God is speaking to us this morning about grace for the race. He says, it is him that maketh my feet feet like hands feet see the scripture and another word for hands is called a deer deer is known for speed especially when being pursued it says it make it my feet so i can run very fast he granted me speed on my legs i can overtake i pray this morning that this scripture will literally come to pass in your life he said, it is God, it is God that give these things. In verse 34, he says, He teacheth my hands to war, so that a bow of steel is broken by my arms. I want to say to you today, that is supernatural strength. When we're talking about speed, come on, people of God, speed is something that does, that relate with how fast you are traveling. It has to do with motions, your movement. It talks about progress. So when we talk about divine speed, we are asking the ability of the almighty God. When the ability of God comes to humanity, it becomes divinity. God is going to add speed to your life. So, but this morning, I want you to look at it very carefully that we're talking about the grace for divine speed. The faster you can go, it's going to be by the propel, the proportion of the grace of God you receive. So this morning, I want you to get ready and say, Father, I need your grace. I need grace for progress. I need grace for my race. And God will give it to you today as you build, as you shout a loud amen in the name of Jesus. Have you noticed in life sometimes some people get in so fast? Everything was working so quick for them. They finished school on time, got job so fast, married so quick, God blessed with a family. And then, of course, they begin to boast. They, have, they don't realize it is grace. So don't boast. See, everything seems to be falling in places with you. Thank God for grace. Maybe yours is not like that. Things are slow for you. You find that things are crawling. 
I don't want you to compete. Don't be angry today because God is the source of all grace. He has enough for everyone. By the end of this message today, whatever grace you need, God will release it upon your life. You can ask for yours because God, the giver of all grace, he has sufficient. So today we are working on a promise of God, a divine promise I want you to hold on to. Jeremiah chapter 1, I'm reading verse number 11. God gave this word to Jeremiah and it's a word we can believe. It's a word we can use for a time like this. In verse 11, he said, Jeremiah, he said, Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Jeremiah, what seest thou? God's word is coming to you today. What do you see? You see, what you see determines what you believe. Many of you, all you see is the negative situations around. Things are slow. Things are not moving as they should be. But God was asking Jeremiah, you can receive what you see if you see right. He says, Jeremiah, what do you see? Some of you, you see weakness. Some see people say failure. Some people say, where I look within me, I see disappointment. I can't see anything working. I say to you, what do you see? Come on, this morning I pray you will see right. I see God fixing that thing that is broken in your life. I see God working wonders and miracles and making way for you and pulling you out of that mighty pit where you are sunk. The God of the, the lifter up of our heads can lift up your head in that situation. God asked him this question. Not because God didn't know the answer. Anytime God asked a question, he wanted to check where you are. God said, Jeremiah, what do you see? Oh, I pray this morning you will see speed. I pray this morning you will see grace. I pray this morning you will see the hand of God coming upon your life. He said, Jeremiah, what do you see? Put your name there. Oh, Ezekiel, what do you see? Deborah, what do you see today? Joseph, what do you see? And Jeremiah said, I see a rod of an almond tree. I see a rod. God he was telling God. And God said, yeah, Jeremiah, you saw right. Look, verse 12. Then said the Lord unto me, thou hast well seen. I pray this morning you will see correctly. You won't see failure anymore. You won't see disappointment anymore. Because God will fix that thing which is broken in our lives. Jeremiah said, I see the armor, a rod of an almond tree. God said, you have well seen. What, did, what does that mean? He said, for I will hasten my word to perform it. God said, because you saw right, I am going to release divine speed. I am going to bring in the unction, the power, the anointing to overtake, to come upon you. I pray for you this morning as you see right, the anointing for speed will come upon your life. In the name of Jesus. We all want things to move very quickly without delay. I also want things to move very fast. We want the project done on record. We want to accomplish our dreams as fast as possible. However, when God, you know, sometimes God allows things to take his time. But when God has approved a thing, we can confront all the challenges and the obstacles on our part. God is saying to the church today, Jubilee, if you will see correctly and if you will hear rightly, God is giving us a prophetic word. It's a moment of divine speed. So if you will believe it and if you will run with it, oh, I declare it, there shall be performance. In the name of Jesus. So this morning, I want to explore with you the secrets of divine speed. The factors that affect speed. And I want to share one of such factors with you today. One of such factors is the factor of grace. It is called grace. I want to say to you, wherever you are today, everything that you've got accomplished until now, it's a function of the grace of God. Everything in life revolves around the corridor of grace. Though we don't often acknowledge it, many times we ignore it, we don't sit like that. But I want to say to you today, grace it is that puts you ahead in life. So this morning, I want to focus your eyes 
on the grace for the, for the race. That by the grace of God, you will gather momentum and you will outrun your enemy. I see a picture of Elijah. Can you give that picture to the people to see? Elijah, we're told in the scripture, he outran Ahab. Man, that is almost impossible. If you can look at the picture, you can see a man running in front of chariots, in front of horses. I mean, that is literally impossible in the human dictionary. But when the grace of God came, when the anointing of God jumped on Elijah, oh come on, something came on his feet. He was running ahead of chariot. I pray this morning for you, grace will come upon your life. One factor, one major factor that brings speed in life is the factor of grace. Yes, we work hard. Yes, we study hard. But I still want to say it is the grace of God. Paul was writing in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse number 10. He was educating us about this fact of grace in life. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 10. He said, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. You see, whatever you see in me, Paul was saying, it is grace that made me. He said, by the grace of God. I am. You know, it was the last of the apostle. See, when it comes to grace, grace can bring the last. The apostle that enter last, grace can catapult them and put them in front of the race. That is what grace can do. I want to say to you today, grace is coming your way. Oh, many of you, you've been running the energy of the flesh. You've been striving. You've been struggling. May you receive grace today for this race. Oh, this race is meant to be run by the grace of God. Look at Paul saying, say, yeah, though I came last, though I was a persecutor, though, though I didn't even see Jesus physically when he was here on earth, but I received grace. Hmm. He said, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace was, which was bestowed upon me was not in vain. He was saying, whatever you see me, grace made it happen. And whatever I will be, grace can make it happen too. Then he went on to say, but I labored. I work harder, more abundantly than, the, than them all. He was talking about his ministry, his life. He said, look, even though I labored more. You know, Paul, apostle, traveled more than the rest of all the apostles put together. He wrote many, many gospels. He did many. He said, I labored more than them all. But look at that word. He said, but yet it is not me. It is not by me because I wanted to. He said, but the grace of God. God, which was with me. See, the ability to do what I do, it was not because I was smart. It was not because I was strong. It was the grace that was propelling me. It was the grace that was pushing me. I pray for you today, whatever looks so hard, whatever looks so impossible in your life, may you receive grace to propel you, to move you forward in the name of Jesus. You know, so many of us, you can boast, oh, I work so hard, yeah, I meet all the requirements, yes, I study, I accomplish so, but do you know what? It is still the grace of God. <laughs> that is the picture of it. it is, what makes you to be more intelligent than the rest of them? It is the grace of God. Amen. The very first time we had the word grace in the Bible was Genesis chapter 6, verse number 8. That was almost about the very first time that God announced to us the mystery of grace. In verse number 8 of Genesis chapter 6, the Bible announced to us that but Noah, the old world at that time, was going to waste, was going to drown in water. He said, but Noah found grace. There was something Noah found. The reason Noah survived, even that difficult time, was the function of grace. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. I pray for you this morning. May you find grace with your boss. May you find grace on that job. You know, the people love you. Not because they wanted to love you, but God gave you grace in their sight. That is how the function of grace works. The things you don't deserve, the things that nobody should give to you, but grace lined you up. Grace positioned you, and they offered it to you. 
come on, people of God, it's not because you are so strong or because you are so smart. It is the function of grace. So I want to dwell on the factor today. Do you want divine speed in your life? I want to ask you, depend on grace. Grace is very much needed in our lives. Blessings are favor and favor of God are delivered unto us on the platform of grace. Whatever you are today, grace made it possible. I love the way somebody said it, that any day in your life, when you step out of your door, without the grace of God behind you, you will face disgrace. I pray nobody in this service this morning, you will encounter disgrace in your life. Grace will cover you up. When you're about to be naked, when your, your shame is about to open, grace will robe you. Oh, come on, do you hear me? Say, grace will robe you. Grace will hide your nakedness. It is grace that feeds us, not even our salary. God's grace, much more grace, is available this morning. God is asking me to tell you that this money, look on my grace. Do you want speed in your life? Grace it is. A factor. And that's where we must begin. Every journey in life must begin with grace of God. I read to you Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 11. Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 11. It was saying the same subject. You've had this scripture from me again and again. I love it because it just explains some mysteries on earth. You know, there are some mysteries we have on earth. We couldn't understand. How come somebody got this? The other person who was even smarter didn't get it. How come this person was so beautiful? Nobody seemed to notice her. There is another factor. You know, Any time that we're not paying attention to, look at that. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 11. He said, I returned, and I saw under the sun that the race, we are talking about the grace for the race, <laughs> that the race, if you are running this race, if you understand how this race works, please pay attention to this. He says, I returned, and I saw under the sun that the race, the race we are all running, is not to the swift. You may be very fast. He said, no, the battle is not to the strong, nor yet the bread to the wise, nor yet riches to men of understanding. Let me break it down to you so that you can understand. He was saying this way, that to begin with, our abilities are no guarantees for success. While it is a general, I mean, generally true that the fastest runners, they win the races, the strongest soldiers, they win the battles, and the smartest and the most skillful workers, they win the best job. But he's saying it is also true that some gifted people who thought they can do it, they can fail miserably because of factors that they cannot control. You may be smart, you may be, you, you, you may be huge, but you may not necessarily win. That's what he's saying. There's a factor here. The factor is the factor of grace. Solomon said, time and chance happen to them all. See, what he called time and chance is what I call the grace of God in the New Testament. I want to say to you today, grace is available. Turn with me quickly. Let's look at this Psalm 18 verse 33 one more time. Psalm 18 verse 33. It says, he maketh my feet. He maketh my feet like hands' feet and setteth me upon my high places. I have found a picture of hind or a deer. If you can put that on the, on the, script, on the screen for people to see. So we're looking at a picture of an animal called deer. Look at the, 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 the feet of this, of, of this animal. Especially, see the, 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 the feet, the, one, the two behind. Do you know there's a proportion? See, when, when, when you see a deer, you can check it on, on movies. You see how they are running, especially when they are being chased. You know, a, a hind, according, according to translation, is a female deer, female red deer. See, this kind of deer is able to move easily, rapidly across rocks, on even terrain, 
over the mountains. It can go and jump on, on rivers. It can live from rocks without losing its footing. Suggesting to us that everyone today, that God will give the anointing of hinds feet upon your life. You will overcome easily. Everything that makes difficult for your life, you will jump over them. You will scale through mountains. All of the stumbling blocks they place in front of you, you will jump ahead of them. Because why? God, he said, he made my feet like hands' feet. He put an anointing of speed on my leg. And so I scaled through. I pray for you this morning that grace of God will locate you. For when grace is present, people of God, the race is easier and become faster. David came from behind. You remember the story of David? He was just a, a, a rudy young boy. Nobody seemed to notice him. And right there in the forest, everybody forgot him. See, but when the, the grace for the race showed up, you know, the Bible tells us he came from behind. He, be, he, he led the whole family. He was not a trained soldier like his brothers. He wasn't built with heavy muscles like his brother. But grace, when grace found him, grace picked him from behind and he led the whole family. I see grace coming upon you today. In divine speed, grace will pick you out. Think about Queen Esther. You know, I was just imagining in that all that day, there were a lot of beautiful ladies, you know, short, light complexion, yellow, all kind of color. People wear different things. People did, because it was a beauty contest. Everybody dressed their best. Everybody used the right color. Everybody was looking for the favor of the king. They came in their best. They were, they, they were highly, I mean, delicately dressed. But that day, grace found this young lady. In fact, the grace for, uh, for Esther began when the, 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 the Enochs, who were preparing the audience, they pulled her aside. You don't need to be in this competition. Let's show you some secret. See, I mean, they knew the formula. I'm saying to the grace of God will find you in the, in the crowd. Everything that Esther needed to do, they were telling her what she needed to do. This is how to dress. This is what cologne to use. This is the kind of the step. They were just giving all those things before the contest. I'm not surprised when the contest showed up, all the beautiful queens there were rejected. But Vaz, I mean, Esther was picked from the, from the array of the beauty pageants. Why? Because grace find her. Grace for the race. And Jesus gave us one example. He, said he was talking about an example of a person who came in to work at the 11th hour. 11th hour of the day for one hour. And that's all he could do. But when it, it, come, it, it came to pay, pay time, this individual collected 12 hour shift pay. I mean, the people were mad. How can you do that? I mean, we were all here all day. We carried the weight. We carried the body. See my muzzle. See my pain. Look at it. My clothes is torn. This guy just came one hour and you chose to give him the same pay. I mean, the man didn't cheat them, but they were so mad. I'm praying for grace of God. Upon, when grace shows up upon you, people become jealous of you. They become angry. They couldn't understand. How could you of all people deserve to get them? Come and shout with me this morning. Lord, I receive grace. Grace for the race. I say to you today, the, the race will be easier when grace is present. Life without grace is a drag. I pray for you today. The Lord will release that grace for you. In Jesus' name. God is saying to Jubilee that how do you get divine speed? He says, start with the factor of grace. I'm reading Psalm 127 to you. Psalm 127 verse number 1. He says, except the Lord build the house. Every time you read scriptures like this, it just makes you to see God in different light. He says, except the Lord build the house. The labor in vain that built it. This man was writing out of experience. If you don't know these things, friend, you'll just be running all over the place. You'll be running without grace. Running without grace is like a car that is trying to run without fuel. He says, except the Lord is in the building, you are just going to be sweating for nothing. He said, the labor in vain that built it. Except the Lord. Keep the city. The watchmen wicked but in vain. 
You know, our countries, it, it, we need the Lord to help us watch the city. See, all the, 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 the COVID has done in the nation, our, our, our leaders are overwhelmed, over perplexed. They flexed their muscle, they, they spoke so loud, but you know what? They couldn't fix the problem. Except God. See, God needs to be in, in the building, otherwise you'll be struggling. Look at verse number two. Say, it is vain. It is vain for you to rise up early. It's rising up early is not the problem. In fact, I encourage you to rise up early because that it shows you are diligent. He said it is, but it is vain. If you rise up early with all your effort minus grace, it will be nothing. It is vain for you to rise up early, sit up late. You are the first to wake up. You are the last to go to bed. And the scripture says, what's happened to you? You are still eating the bread of sorrow. Why? Because God giveth his own beloved sleep. They sleep well in the night. They wake up refreshed. And the grace for the race is available. Before you step out this morning, I want to say, God, I am stepping out by grace. This week, as you go to work, I want you to put the fact of grace in front of you. You already have grace, but you can actually focus on it and say, God, for this race, I depend on on your grace. Accept the Lord. Without his commensurate, commensurate help, we would just struggle. Those of us who, who, who love to boast about our accomplishment, our success, we are not aware that, that there's a working grace that is making us to accomplish it. I want to say today, I summarize this message this way. Race plus grace is equal speed. Put that on the screen. Race plus grace is equal speed. Race minus grace. <laughs> I don't know what you could be equal to. You is equal to struggle. You could you could, you, could, you could flip it around. Race plus grace will bring speed. Race minus grace will bring struggle. I think that's a good summary. Whatever you are dealing with this morning, I want you to focus your eyes on the grace of God. I'm going to begin to wind down a little bit. I want to share with you the, the passage we read earlier on, Zechariah chapter 4. In verse number 7, we hear God, uh, we hear Zechariah or uh, the angel speaking, Who art thou, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel? Do you know what was going on in that scripture? See, Zerubbabel had been building uh, the temple of the Lord, and things were so slow. You see, they were not moving quickly. It was so bad. It was, so, it was like a drag. They were discouraged. They were not moving fast. The work is not being completed. So God now wanted to encourage Encourage uh, Zerubbabel. So he sent the word to him. He says, Zerubbabel, it is not by power. It is not by mind. You've been trying to do a whole lot by yourself. But look at it. Take your eyes away from your ability. It is not those things that you thought you know to do. It's not the experience you can't own that will get the result. He said, no. In verse number 6, you can give that to us. Zechariah chapter 1, verse 6. It is not by power. It is not by mind. He said, but by my spirit. But by my spirit, said the Lord. Then in verse number seven, he now gave him the formula. If any one of you today, you are struggling with something, some projects are failing to be completed. You started it and it's just coming like, man, it's not going to happen. Oh, this is the formula this day. So God spoke to Zerubbabel through the scripture and he gave him a formula. He says, who are thou, O great mountain? Whatever it is that is causing this hindrance, whatever demon that is slowing down the purpose of God in my life, he addressed that mountain. He said, who are you, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel, you shall become a plain. So what is going to happen then? He said, it shall bring forth the edge stone thereof with shouting. This is the formula. He said, for you to get these things done, there's a shout you need to make. Oh, he said, with shouting. What is the shout? It's not 911, not help somebody. No, he said, come and shout something on it. Shout grace. Shout grace unto it. That is the formula. I want to say to you this morning, whatever it is that confronts you on that job, look at it and say, in the name of Jesus, I shout grace and grace on him. Maybe your son is not doing well. Your daughter is not doing well. Your project is not getting down. School is slow for you. One thing you can do this morning is shout the shout. He cry. What did he cry? He cry grace and grace unto it. May God give you that grace today. So when things are slow, when mountains are standing in front of you, when things are difficult, this is a formula. We can use that. So when race and grace are present, 
you can expect faith to follow. Oh, and you know what happened? Zerubbabel completed that job. The work was done. The, the, the temple was finished because grace came on it. This is the secret, people of God. It is not the struggle. Come on, let's ask God to add grace to my race and then speed will follow. Let's close this. I want to share with you how do you then assess grace? If I can go by very briefly, how do you assess a grace? Grace for this kind of speed. How do you get this grace? I want to spell grace for you. Some of you might have had me spoken about this before, but I wanted to give it to you in a fresh way. How do you assess grace? Let's spell grace together. Grace is spelled as G and R and A and A and, and C and E. You can spell that too. Access to grace for speed. Come and give it to us the next screen. You will see how grace is spelled. I want to speak to you about five things that bring grace to your life. Number one is God. That is the G. Number two is R. That is the arrest. Number three is A. That is the attitude you must have. And number the fourth one is you must call. So that if you want to assess grace, you have to call. And then number five, the fifth one, if you are spelling grace, you must have expectation. Now let me explain this briefly to you. How do I assess the grace of God? Let's look at the first one. Number one is the factor of God. God is a big factor. In Psalm 84 verse 11, Psalm 84 verse 11, he said, For the Lord, for the Lord God is a son and shield. The Lord, the Lord God is a son. Look at that word. Son means it's radiance. God, when, when God shows up, he carries favor. Son means illumination. He it says it's a son and a shield. It's a defense for, for those who have no cover. It's a protection. Then he went on to say, he says, the Lord will give grace and glory. Oh, it will give grace. So look at the, the order. Grace comes first and glory follows. Your life will never lack the glory when grace is present. Grace comes first. When your life is filled with glory, no demon can look at your face. But do you know how it started? Your quest, therefore, must be for grace to be released. The rest will be easy. It says God gives what? Grace and glory. He, he, he ordered it correctly. You know, I, I believe the Holy Spirit ordered things for us so that we can see it in the right perspective. He didn't say God give glory and grace. No, he says he give grace and then glory. So grace is the foundation. Glory is the manifestation. See, grace is the explanation of the glory. Every glory you enjoy in your life, grace started it. When there is a struggle, it's an evidence that grace is lacking. When people can get things done, it means grace is missing. I say to you today, whatever you have as an ability, it is because you lack grace in that area. But this morning, receive the grace of God. God! Give what? Grace and glory. So the function, number one, is you got to connect with him. If you want grace for the speed, if you want to, if you want to run with speed, connect with God. Please, with, please God. Make God your quest. Put him number one in your life. Then you will have some speed coming to your life. So spelling grace, we start with G. The next one is R. What does that stand for? R means rest. How means rest. See, I have seen in, in life that one of the function of grace is rest. To receive grace, you have to stop, uh, you have to quit struggling. See, you have to come to a place of rest and total trust. I love it the way Psalm 37 verse number 7 put it. Come and put that on the screen for us. Psalm 37 verse number 7. He put it so clearly. He said, you need to rest in the Lord. If you want to get anything done, he said, rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not. Three instructions. Number one, rest. Number two, wait. Number three, stop fretting. See, you are killing yourself. You want to struggle for everything. See, it was like the story of Jacob. See, Jacob was a man given to scheming and manipulating his way. He schemed his way to get to get uh, the birthright. He schemed his brother out of the blessing of the father. Everything ab about Jacob was scheming. Scheme your way out. You'll get stuff done if you can scheme very well. But I want to say to you, he left grace behind. See, when grace is out, you'll be left with scheming. Many of you today that are struggling and scheming and manipulating 
certain thing. You see, the problem is you have not understood the function of the grace of God. I want you to know today, learn to rest. Many of you don't know how to rest. No, rest, rest for where you must be doing something. You must be pulling something. So people have to lie. They have to cut corners so that they can make things happen. God said, come on, rest. If you want me to help you, you know, think about a barber saloon. You went to a barber and you struggling your head with him. How will he give you a nice yakko? Or you went to a surgeon who wanted to do an operation in your stomach and you were talk, talk, talking back and, and arguing with him. I don't like that blade. I don't like that scissors. I don't want that that cutty woo. I don't like the face of that nurse. Man, they got to knock you out, knock you off, so that you can rest, so that the physician can work on your life. Oh man, I'm. Sp- speaking to you today, depend on the grace. Depend on the grace of God. I love it the way he put it to, to, to Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 12. He gave him a secret, verse number 9. 2 Corinthians 12, verse 9. And he said unto me, here was Paul writing again. He understood this subject so much. He said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee. You know, Paul was saying, I have been struggling with some stuff, some, some pain were in my body. I was carrying some weakness. I was struggling with this stuff. I, I pray like three times. I, I argue with God. I fasted about it. Then God had to talk to me. And he said, my grace is sufficient for you. Rest now, man. Stay quiet. Stay down. I can fix what is wrong with you. Look at that. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. It's when you are weak, I can fix what is wrong with you. He said, most gladly therefore will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Look at that. Verse 10. Therefore I take pleasure in my infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Look at that. See, it doesn't really make sense. How can you be weak and be strong? No, what that means is when you feel weak and you feel powerless, grace is relevant. See, when you feel inadequate, unprepared for a journey, then grace makes sense. When you failed and you, 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 everybody you depend on disappoints you, then grace becomes relevant. So this morning, I want you to appreciate the grace of God that even though when you are strong, in fact, when you are too strong, you don't need grace. It is when you feel you can't do it. That is when grace comes in. Anything you want you to do this morning, say, Father, by myself, I cannot do this. Even though I know the formula, you are preparing for an interview. I know all the answers in the book, but say, God, without you, I cannot do this. That is dependence on grace and you rest. Rest means you lean on him. You lean on him. What are you going to eat tomorrow? Are you going to have your job after Corona is over? Lean on him. All of those things that's keeping you awake in the night, make you to have sleepless night. Come on. Tell him, Lord, today I rest. <laughs> I rest my case. I want some of you to rest your case. All this phone call you are calling, they have not got you anywhere. You are all over the place. You are shouting on top. Of your, you are fighting with everybody. But where is grace here? Come on, call on grace. And one of the factors of grace is rest. Amen. Let me talk, talk about the last three things very quickly. The next one is attitude. What is the access to this grace? You got to have right attitude. What is attitude? Your someone says your attitude determines your attitude. A proud and arrogant person is too heavy to be lifted up by grace. Do you know if you are heavy and full of yourself, grace will drop you. An attitude of humility, openness to correction is vital to receive grace. If somebody speaks to you, you get mad. If somebody corrects you, you lose your cool. Why? Because you have attitude. Your attitude is hitting you up. In fact, it is smelling on you. When people want to help you, your attitude is already smelling. Before you arrive, you say, mm, 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 don't, 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 don't give him the formula. No, don't, don't talk. He is full of himself. Look into, look into our White House today. Look all over. There is attitude there. And how can God speak to them? When you already talk to you know the answer. Come on. I want you to humble yourself before the Lord. James chapter 4 says, He giveth more grace. He giveth, wow, even grace. He giveth it more. Why? Because he says, God resists the proud, but he giveth grace unto the humble. <laughs> when grace is not available for this man, grace is much more available for this other guy. God says the factor is their attitude. 
I look at their heart, and I note this guy is full of himself. This one needs help. Carry him. Angels are about to carry you, but your attitude won't let them. As they say, father is too heavy because they drop him. Because he's full of himself. Until he's free of that attitude, we won't carry him. I want you to change your heart today and say, Father, I repent of an attitude of pride in my life, and grace will carry you. Number four, what do you do? Spelling grace, God, rest, upright attitude. What about the sea? Cry to God. If you want grace, cry. Cry to God in prayer, and God's answer will come to you. Psalm 84 verse 7 says, they go from strength to strength. Every one of them in Zion appearing before God. As we appear before God, it gives grace. Oath, uh, uh, Hebrews chapter 4 verse number 16, 16 says, let us come boldly to the throne of grace that we may receive help mercy and find grace to help us in time of need. So we cry. Whatever deficiency in your life this morning, we will cry to God. Lord, I receive grace for the race. And the last one, E, expect it. Expectation. That is your faith. Believe God. If you want grace this morning, as I'm praying for you today, God will give you grace for the race. But your faith has to be in place. Faith is the currency of exchange between heaven and earth. Without it, we cannot receive anything from God. So today, if things are slow coming your way, I want you to open your heart to God and activate your faith in prayer. I want to believe God and in a few minutes, choir is going to join me. We're going to sing this song together and as we sing, I want you to believe God for grace. We're going to receive grace today. Much more grace. Grace that we can never imagine. Come and open your hand this morning and begin to pray with me. Can I have the choir and pray with me? Lord, I receive your grace. Oh Lord, I release grace for my race. Without his grace, brother, your race is going to be hard. You see, it's already hard because you are struggling without his grace. I pour the oil of grace upon your life today. Come and open your and say, Father, release grace. Oil of grace. God will give grace and glory. Oh God, release grace and let glory come. Oh God, release grace and let your glory come. We're going to sing this song. God's grace is greater. Greater than our weakness. Greater than our struggle. Greater than our sin. Choir, are you ready? Grace of God. Please put it on the screen so that the, uh, the families, wherever you are, in your household, come on, let's sing it together. Open your heart to God and say, Lord, I receive it. The grace for this race. Come on, let's sing it together.
The Bible said this a call into Zerubbabel. He said, Cry grace, grace, grace on this problem. Whatever grace you have in your life right now, lift your two hands before and say, Father, I receive grace for the rich. In the name of Jesus, that which is impossible, that which is difficult, that which I'm struggling with, I ask for the grace of God. Grace of God on my job. Grace of God in my marriage. Grace of God in my finances. I receive God's peace right now in every aspect of my life in the name of Jesus. Come and pray together and say, Father, let your grace be released. I receive speed to pursue and receive speed to overtake and to recover everything that I have lost. Opportunity, promotions, blessings in areas, back pay in the name of Jesus. Grace is available this morning. May grace catch up with you. May grace overtake you. May you have surplus of grace in the name of Jesus. Humble yourself before this and say, Father, lift me up by your mighty power. Lift me up every area where I'm struggling. Holy Spirit of God, strengthen me. Every deficiency in my life, Lord, pour your grace. Let the oil of grace never lack in my life. In the name of Jesus, I receive speed now. Grace for this race. In the mighty name of Jesus. Pray this last prayer with me. Every power that is pursuing me, I receive the speed to over outrun you. Some forces are pursuing your life, but God will make you to outrun them. I say you will outrun poverty. You are drawn frustration. Come and say it one more time. Oh God, every power that is pursuing my destiny, I receive now the speed of the most high to outrun them, to outrun them. You will never catch up with me because of the grace of God. I receive now the grace I need to operate my marriage, to operate my finances, to operate my work, to operate my job. Grace of God that is much more than my needs. As we close this morning, if you are not born again, since that's the grace that is enough, grace that will, that will overwhelm your sin. You may thought you have messed up so big time, and you think that God's grace cannot reach you. You feel dirty, you feel down, you feel, you feel unclean, you messed up, messed around. But I release grace of God to you this morning to pick you up, to wash you within, and to bring you without unto the place of grace. I pull you out of the mighty clay where sin sunk you. In the mighty name of Jesus, come and say with me, Jesus, I open my heart for you. I receive salvation. I confess my sin to you. Let your grace pick me up right now. In the name of Jesus, receive grace today. I pray for everyone. Open your hands. Receive grace. Every end of your life, receive the grace of God for the speed. Speed. Be your destiny coming to pass, your project be fulfilled. Everything that is slow in your life, grace will fast forward it. Lord, we say thank you for the beginning of grace, bringing speed into our lives. Glory and honor unto you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on.